Justin, I am so excited about your new movie, Clouds, which is premiering on Disney+. Plus. You have been a part of this story for seven years now. How does it feel to have this story go from something that you worked on as a documentary all the way to Disney Plus as a feature film? Um, I'm, it's been a day of emotion. So uh, I, I might be at a loss for words. Um, look, how does it feel? It feels amazing, it feels humbling. I feel grateful. It's been a tremendous amount of work. Um, it's been a huge responsibility. It's been all of the things. They're all the things. It's, but that's what life is, right? Life's never just one thing. It's all the things together. And, um, and so it's like, it's, I'm, I'm hopeful for the first time in a while because, you know, our world has been going through so much and not everybody got a chance to meet Zach the way that I did. And, be directly impacted by his energy the way that I was. And, you know, so much of this for me is also giving people a chance to get to meet him in a new way and see how he lived. And I just believe that he is going to bring so many people hope at a time when people feel so hopeless, hopeless. And that's really important to me right now. So I'm feeling all the things I'm feeling emotional. I'm feeling grateful. I'm, uh, and yeah, I'm confused. I'm all of it. I'm all of it. Cause also it's been my, it's been my life for so long. So it's like this chapter is ending. And so it's, you know, it's all the things. Well, if it makes you feel better, I felt all the emotions as I watched it last night. <laughs> it, I was crying. I what was, was your crying. favorite. What was your favorite scene? Do you have a favorite scene? Uh, I think my favorite scene was Zach just singing in the bedroom. It was just such like this sweet emotional moment with this girl that he loves so much. Oh, fix me up when they sang Fix Me Up? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 not Fix Me Up. When he's singing in the bedroom um, to Amy. Oh, yes. Oh, when he's saying, yeah, you want to hear a story? Yes. I'm going to divert your, all right. So the scene you're talking about um, is when he was singing Little Dancer. And after the table read, we felt like we needed another musical moment in the movie. So I asked Finn to go write a song. And I asked him to write a song um, based on a pin that Amy had that, uh, I'm sorry, based on a pin that Zach had that Amy gave him called um, Boy Dancer's Boyfriend. And he went and he started writing and he wrote this song and then he was looking for the chorus and he remembered when I took him to Minnesota to meet the family that he had taken a picture of Zach's journal. And in that journal had an unfinished song that Zach had written to Amy. And Finn looked at that picture and put the lyrics into his song and they fit perfectly. So <laughs> Finn had written this song, couldn't find the chorus, went back and put Zach's words into the chorus and it magically fit. Then he went back and he looked at the picture and saw that Zach had written a chord progression. And he realized that the song he had just written was the identical chord progression of the song that Zach was writing before he died. So Finn and Zach wrote a song together in the movie. And that's the song that you thought was the best song in the movie. That is so sweet. That adds like a hundred layers to what was already my favorite. That song was co-written by Zach and Finn. So when you look at the credits, it's a Zach Sobiak, Finn Argus original song. Now, I actually heard from Sabrina earlier today that there were a lot of little moments like that where you guys felt Zach's presence throughout the movie. Can you share any of those other stories from working on it and feeling like he was a part of it? Yeah, look, so from the very beginning, this movie was impossible to make by Hollywood standards, right? And I just always believed that Zach wanted his story told. And if Zach wanted his story told, he was gonna work through all of us to make sure it was told. So starting the movie, one of the first things I said to everybody, every time I cast an actor or hired a crew member or brought on a writer, it was look for the miracle, look for the magic. Zach will communicate with you and to you if you have an open heart, whether you believe it or not, whether you're a skeptic or a cynic or you don't believe in an afterlife, it doesn't matter. Just be open and I promise you it'll happen. 
imagine your crazy director telling you that, right? <laughs> we're in Montreal shooting, you have people, you have wardrobe people, you have locations people. And I'm saying, just look for the magic. And when impossible things happen, you'll understand. I'll give you one small example. We were shooting um, in Montreal. We needed to find the location um, for the Metropolitan Theater that takes place, you know, the big, huge moment at the end of the movie. And we couldn't find a theater because there was another production that had more money in Montreal shooting that took up all the theaters. And we, need, we needed the theater on the one day we had Jason Mraz, but we needed it for four days. They tried and tried and tried and couldn't find anything. We needed it to house 500 extras and needed to have a, a like a special location um, for all of our equipment, it needed to have an outdoor and an indoors. It needed all of these things and there was nothing. I get a call from my, my wife randomly saying, hey, uh, so Maya wants to go see the Wiggles in concert. Um, is that like, and it turns out they're here. Like, can we go? And I said, sure. First of all, my daughter's never asked for a concert. She was four at the time. She didn't even know what a concert was. She was watching the Wiggles and randomly said to my wife, can we go see the Wiggles? And my wife's like, oh, sweetheart, they live in Australia. She Googles and finds out they're gonna be in Montreal the next week. So she says, baby, let's go see the Wiggles in concert. Can you get off that day? I said, yeah, let me, let me take a couple hours off. I go to this concert. I walk in and I see this beautiful venue. And I'm like, <laughs> why didn't I look at this? Is this not available? So I go back to the production office and they're all about to tell me we have to change the vision because there's no venue available. And I said, you know, guys, I went to this Wiggles concert. And, <laughs> and this venue was beautiful. Can we use it? And they said, yeah, we've tried it's booked up the entire month. And I said, call again in the morning. The next day I forget about it. I walk in to my office. I'm sitting in my, uh, in, in my production office and four or five people walk into my office and their faces are white. And they say, Justin, we called the venue and last night, the show canceled and four days open that are exact that are the exact days that we need to shoot this movie. <laughs> and they didn't know what to say. And I'm like, and I said, wait, say that one more time. They said, someone called the venue last night and canceled their show on the exact days we need to shoot our movie. And I said, great. So is it booked? And they said, it's booked. <laughs> and then they looked at me and they said, the Zach effect is real. You were right. This is magic. And that's just one example of how it worked is, is when it was impossible, it was possible. Zach found a way to make things possible. And in this case, he worked through my daughter. He worked through my little girl and my wife and it, it went all the way around to the crew and then to me. And I have said from the beginning, if it's not you, he will go to somebody else. How many times when I was making this movie did I think about saying something and didn't say it only to have somebody else come and say it to me two minutes later? Zach chose the open receptacles. And that's why I had his chair with me on set every single day. Every day there was an empty director's chair with his name on it because I wanted everybody on set to see why they were making this movie and who they were making this movie for. That's why the family was on set. That's why in that audience at the end of the movie, there were 70 friends and family of Zach sitting in that audience who were the real people that were, that were the people he loved the most that lifted him up that were singing clouds at the end of that movie. And that's why he wore the real clothes. I asked him, I had Finn wear Zach's real clothes in the movie because that energy, that comes through the screen. Yeah, that's just incredible to hear that Zach's energy and his message, exactly really what you wanted in this movie for his message to come through happened even in production and I am so, so excited for the world to get to see this movie because it's incredible and it inspired me so much. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. <laughs> thank you so much, Katzi. I appreciate it. <laughs>